The word poser gets thrown around quite a bit in motorcycling circles and it generally carries a pretty negative vibe to it. But if you were to actually analyze the meaning of the word, it would apply quite nicely to this long overdue motorcycle. I mean, if you think about it, the only reason the Java Perak exists is to look good and make its owner feel good. Java really has nailed that first part and they went all out in the process of building their idea of a bobber, even if it does come with many compromises that few other manufacturers would be willing to make. To create this motorcycle, Java has used a new frame and swing arm and where there used to be a rear subframe, there is now just a single cantilevered seat that emerges from the main frame. This seat is bolted to the main frame via a tough looking slab of metal and its tan shade contrasts beautifully with the black theme and gold pinstriping on the bike. There's a neat round LED brake lamp tacked onto the back of the seat and behind that all you'll see is a large rear fender. The slash cut exhaust pipes also look like they came straight off a concept bike and the only way that Java could make this design work is by hiding the emissions relevant collector box underneath the motorcycle. With its open rear section and wide triangular side panels, this bike looks almost extraterrestrial on our roads. It really is a fabulous looking thing and the first time you see it, you'll be like a deer stuck in the headlights. I remember just standing there and soaking in all the details and that's something that happens quite rarely, even with bikes that cost 10 times the price. It's when you really observe this motorcycle in detail that you'll see that the finish levels are also higher than the current models from Java. However, some existing issues do continue and the speedometer still catches moisture on cold mornings. The way that speedo is placed also means that the rider can't see the bottom half of the screen. Overall though, there is still some room for improvement in the finish, particularly in the uneven gaps you'll see in the exhaust heat shield. Another I saw is the way the exposed cables for the rear indicators are held in place with just some roughly cut zip ties. Our motorcycle had clocked less than 650 kilometers, and while it displayed no rattles, it did manage to lose a bolt that holds the rear fender in place. Nevertheless, what's without question is that the Perak attracts heaps of attention wherever it goes. So the Perak really has hit it out of the park when it comes to looking good. But what about making the owner feel good? Well, that's where we encounter the first problem, the riding position. Jawas have always felt cramped in the seat to foot peg ratio, but the Perak is even more so because at 750mm, this seat is 10mm lower than the standard models. That's great for shorter riders, but the problem is that the foot pegs are placed right below you and quite high up, which creates a pretty uncomfortable riding position, especially for tall riders. There are other ergonomic issues as well, and those smart looking bar and mirrors do work well, but you'll have to get used to the mirror stocks being in constant contact with your hand. And as for that lovely tan seat, it remains comfortable for a short duration, but over long distances it feels too soft and your backside will soon join your knees and hip joints in begging for a break. In fact, there are numerous aspects that constantly remind you that this motorcycle is best savoured over shorter distances. The Perak's ride quality is another example of this. The suspension travel has reduced at both ends and while the front suspension is quite decent, the big issue is at the rear. That cleverly hidden monoshock is set a little on the softer side, but the real problem is that there's just 86mm of suspension travel available. So while the ride quality is manageable at low speeds, if you hit bumps at moderate or higher speeds, the rear shock simply runs out of travel. And that means that your lower back has to bear the brunt of our shabby roads. If you're willing to bear with the uncomfortable ride quality, the Perak's engine is quite game to carry higher speeds. This liquid-cooled 334cc motor is 41cc bigger than the engine in the normal Jawas and it produces about 4 more horsepower and 5 newton meters of additional torque. The feel of the engine is quite similar and it also produces that typical thrummy exhaust sound that has become quite identifiable with the new age Jawas. The motor also has a familiarly flat power delivery but there is a noticeably stronger surge as the revs climb and our test figures show that the Perak is respectively quick. The Perak gathers speed faster than the normal Jawas and the way it crosses 80, 100 and even 120 kph takes noticeably less effort. There are some mild vibrations to be felt at higher speeds and these do get quite strong near the top speed of 140 kph. But then again, this isn't the sort of bike that you'd ride like that for long periods. As for the brakes, they're lifted straight off the smaller Jawas and while they do have a dull feel, they also slow the bike down well enough when needed. 
so the pedak is quick enough in a straight line to keep your pulse up. But what happens when this bike encounters a set of corners? Well, once again, it is quite capable, but there is a catch. At 175 kilos, the Pirak is quite lightweight and is just 3 kilos heavier than the regular Jawas. It also has a similar steering geometry, which means that the front end doesn't require much effort to change direction. However, the wheelbase is now much longer and coupled with slightly fatter tyres at both ends, this bike isn't quite as agile as its smaller siblings. Nevertheless, it still feels light on its feet compared to other bikes in the classic segment and the Perak is quite willing to corner. The issue is that with such tight packaging for the exhaust pipes, there really wasn't much room for the side stand and that means the bike handles quite nicely if you're going around a right-hander. But around left-handers, you'll find that the side stand scrapes quite easily and you do have to be careful not to overdo it because nobody wants stand down to extend into man down. Continuing on the topic of clearance, the Perak is down on ground clearance from the Jawas by 20 millimeters, and that means you have to be really careful over nasty speed breakers or the bike will bottom out. Clearly then, practicality is not a word that exists in the Perak's realm of reality. This is a strict single-seater and that means you can't take your partner out for a ride or drop your kid off to school when they do eventually reopen. Those large side panels on the side have no significant storage space either and they won't be able to hold much more than some papers and a small tool set. It's not like the Perak is loaded with features either. Dual channel ABS is standard, but beyond that things are quite spartan. That tiny digital screen simply displays the Odo and you don't even get a trip meter, let alone things like a gear position indicator. There's no LED headlamp or LED indicators either and while the retro look of the halogens is quite nice, I do wish the Perak at least had a side stand down warning or engine kill feature because that's something that's available on many bikes that cost far less money. At Rs 1.97 lakh X showroom, the Java Perak isn't something for a serious motorcyclist. If you're the type who dreams of a gentle cruise or a fast ride or simply riding into the distance, there are plenty of options available at this price that will serve your desires in a much more satisfying manner. There's also the fact that this bike was launched over a year after it was first promised and because there are so few bikes on the road right now, there's no knowing how the Perak's quality and reliability will fare in the long term. But despite all these issues, there is one strong driving force behind this motorcycle. Now, I know I've said this a few times already, but the Perak really looks like nothing else. And that sense of sheer style, uniqueness and shock value is going to appeal to a certain sort of customer. Especially when you consider the fact that this motorcycle is unlikely to be a common sight on our roads. Look at it this way. People spend lakhs and lakhs of rupees on customizing their motorcycles to make them stand out from the crowd. And only the best custom houses will be able to achieve something that has this combination of design, engineering and finish. And yet here you have a radical looking motorcycle that has been through stringent levels of testing and homologation and it even comes with a factory supported 2 year 24,000 km warranty. Suddenly that price seems rather reasonable and to those who simply want to stand out from the crowd, the Java Perak has got to be a tempting proposition.